Now that you've had a look at perimeter and perimeter conversions, in this video we're going to look at area and area conversions. Where perimeter was the distance around the shape, area is the space inside the shape. So here we have a look, if for example you had to put little blocks inside a shape, we can basically count the blocks. Here we have one block. In the next example, we have four blocks. In the next one, we have nine blocks. And in the last one, we have 16 blocks. But how do we know what the size of each block will be? So in this specific example, they say that the, uh, the one side is one centimeter and the other side is also one centimeter. So when we work with a two-dimensional shape, we multiply the two dimensions. So one times one gives me one. And centimeter multiplied by centimeter, centimeter squared. Showing me that little two reminds me that it's a 2D shape. So here we did it for squares, but we can also do it for rectangles. So in this shape, there are one, two, three, four blocks in the length and two in the width. Meaning that four multiplied by two will give me eight centimeter squared. But what if this was millimeters? What would I have done then? Because remember, one centimeter equals 10 millimeters. That will mean that my length is 10, 20, 30, 40 millimeters, and my length is 20 millimeters, and 40 times 20 gives me 800. So what happened in terms of this conversion? Let's have a look in more detail. Four centimeters multiplied by two centimeters gave me eight centimeters squared. So this was the area of the rectangle in centimeters squared. The area of the rectangle in millimeters squared would be 40 millimeters multiplied by 20 millimeters. And now we get 800 millimeters squared. This should indicate to us that although the conversion between centimeters and millimeters is 10, like we learned from perimeter conversions, the conversion between centimeters squared and millimeters squared is not 10, but 100. But why? Now, let's consider what we know. Millimeters to centimeters is 10. But the moment that I go from millimeters squared to centimeters squared, I have to divide by 10 squared, which is 100. And if I go from centimeters to millimeters, I multiply by 10 squared, as we just saw. This is because there are two dimensions and you are converting by 10 for both of those conversions. The same applies from centimeter squared to millimeter squared. Because you do it for both dimensions, you have to divide by 100 and 100 again or divide by 100 squared. From meter squared to centimeter squared, you will multiply by 100 squared or 100 times another 100. And then from meter squared to kilometer squared, I will divide by 1000 squared for the two dimensions. And from kilometers to kilometer squared to meter squared, you will multiply by 1000 squared. Keeping this in mind, let's just try a few of these conversions. In each case, note that I go from centimeters squared to millimeters squared. For the normal conversion from centimeters to millimeters, I would multiply by 10. But now I need to multiply by 10 squared, meaning that I will get 670 millimeters squared. Now, the reverse, from millimeters squared to centimeter squared, I need to divide by 10 squared. So if I write that little calculation in there, divided by 10 squared, I'm going to get a really small number of 0, 0,08 centimeters squared. Let's do one more. From meter squared to centimeter squared, Let's go and have a look. Meters squared to centimeters squared, I have to multiply by a thousand 
squared. So this is going to give me quite a big number. It's going to be zero, add another two zeros, add another two zeros, and we will see that it's four million centimeters squared. Let's have a look at some formulas. To calculate the area of a square, I have to say side multiplied by side. A square does not have a length and a width because both the sides are the same. So we therefore only call them side multiplied by side. This can also be written as side squared. So completing this table, if I have to find the area of a square with side lengths each of 5, I'm going to say 5 multiplied by 5, which gives me 25 and it is centimeters squared. 7, if 7 is the side, then I'm going to say 7 times 7, which gives me 49 centimeters squared. Have you noticed that all of these are square numbers? Meaning that we can also ask you um, the area of a square backwards. This is when we give you the area and ask what was the side length. Do you know what's multiplied by what gives me 36? Well, if you're not too sure, remember that you can use your square root button on your calculator and the square root of 36 is indeed 6 centimeters squared. The same for 169. You should know that this is 13, but if you don't, you can use the square root button on your calculator to get you 13 centimeters. Not squared because this is a side length and not the area. Let's have a look at the area of a rectangle. For this one, we have a length and a width. Some people also call the width the breadth. So length times width or length times breadth gives me the area, just like we did previously when we counted the blocks. So we don't always just want to draw little blocks inside because that can be very tedious. So all we need to do is multiply the length by the breadth. To calculate the area of this first rectangle, I'm therefore going to say 11 multiplied by 6. So that means that the area is 66 centimeters squared. For the next question, they gave us the area and one of the sides. They gave us the width and they're asking for the length. So if I need to set up a, a formula for this, normally I would say area equals length times width, I know that the area is 40, I don't know what the length is, but I do know that the width is 5. What will go into that block to make this equation true? So what multiplied by 5 gives me 40? If you're not too sure to do that, let's work backwards and say 40 divided by 5, and this will give you an answer of 8 centimeters. So even for rectangles, we can work backwards to find one of the missing sides. You might ask yourself, what about a triangle? So what you need to remember here is that a triangle is always half a rectangle. In this case, it's very obvious that the triangle is a half. But what if the triangle does not have a little 90 degree angle over here? Well, I've drawn quite a few other triangles and here you can see that all of them make up half the rectangle. If you don't believe me, stop this video here and count the little blocks. They all take up half the space of the outline of each of these rectangles. Therefore, we can use write a formula for a triangle. And we say the formula for a triangle is half times base times height. We don't call it length and width because sometimes the height of the rectangle or the width is actually in the middle of the triangle and sometimes with obtuse triangles they're even on the outside. That's why we use the term base and height. If you learn about parallelograms you will see that we also use the term base and height. Um, what we do need to note here is that the height is always where we have a 90 degree. Because remember, if you consider this as half a rectangle and a rectangle has 90 degree angles, we need to look for the 90 degree to know what the length and width of the rectangle is, or in this case, the base and the height. Let's work out a few questions as examples. So in this case, 
my base is 30, my height is 40. But remember, because this is a triangle, I'm not only going to say 30 times 40, I'm going to say half of, and of is multiply, 30 times 40. So if 30 times 40 gives me 1,200, then half of that gives me 600. And remember your unit, millimeters squared. For the pink triangle, I'm going to do the same. Half times base of 50 times height of 38. If I multiply 50 by 38, I get 1,900. And half of that is 950. Also, millimeters squared. My last question here, I have the height on the outside. Not to worry though. Just follow the formula like we have above. And we're going to say half times base of 20 times height of 40. 20 times 40 gives me 800. And half of 800 is 400 millimeters squared. And now you should know how to work our triangles, rectangles and squares. So it's time to put them all together. In these two questions, you only need to know uh, rectangles, squares and triangles. And we're going to break up each of these shapes. So starting with our first one, let's see what shapes we are dealing with. You can consider it a big rectangle. And then there's two white little triangles that have been cut off this big rectangle. Let's draw this out. So I have a rectangle. And then from this rectangle, I cut off a little triangle in the one corner, which I'm going to take away. And I'm also going to take away the other little triangle in the other corner. And that's going to give me this funny looking shape that looks like this. So now this means we need to work out the area of the rectangle, the area of the triangle and the area of the other little triangle. Let's start with the rectangle first. I have a length of 7 and a width of 6. So this is going to be 7 multiplied by 6. Let's consider the triangle. The triangle has um, 2 over here and 2 on the other side because these two would be the same. So it looks like the base and the height is exactly the same and there's a 90 degree between them which means this is a right angle triangle. So half of 2 times 2. And remember, the other one is going to be exactly the same. Half of 2 times 2. Now let's see what all these little calculations are. The rectangle would be have an area of 42. One of the triangles would be 2 times 2, which is 4, and half of that is 2, which means the other one is 2 as well. So if I do this whole calculation, I get an area of 38 centimeters squared. Let's try it now for the blue shape, which looks almost like a little house. In this case, I have a triangle at the top, a big rectangle at the bottom, and then a little rectangle has been cut out as the door. So if I draw this out, I have a triangle plus a big rectangle but since the little door was cut out I have to subtract that. Let's start by looking at the triangle. In triangles always see if you can find the 90 degree angle. So the 90 degree angle indicates that one side is the base and the other side is the height. Once again it doesn't matter which one is which. In this case they are also exactly the same. So this is going to be half times 6 times 6. What about my rectangle? The big rectangle is 2 plus 3 plus 2 in length, which gives me 7. And the width is 6. Therefore, my rectangle is 7 multiplied by 6. My little rectangle, all the information was also given. I have a length of 4 and a width of 3. 
So 4 multiplied by 3. Let's go work out all the different bits and pieces. So firstly, 6 times 6 is 36, and half of that is 18. I add to that 7 multiplied by 6, which is 42, and I subtract the little rectangle, which is 4 multiplied by 3, which is 12. All of this together gives me 48 centimeters squared. So that was the triangle added to the rectangle and without or subtracting the little rectangle. And now we've done all the basics on area. Of course, in Maths Learns, we look at area calculations and the applications of them. So besides painting, there are also a few others. Uh, the garden layout. So here we have Kaylee thinking about um, a garden and she's got a semicircular pond and it's also got this feature in the middle. Uh, maybe there's some water coming out of that centerpiece of the circle or the fountain and there are a few questions that they're asking. So the first question is that we need to determine the inner diameter of the fish pond. So on the drawing they show you the inner radius and they also show you that this total length over here is 4,5. If I know that the total length is 4,5 and that the fountain wall is 10 centimeters thick on either side, then it's actually pretty easy to find out that the inside will be 4,1 minus 0, 0,1 of the wall on either side. So that will give us an inner diameter of 3,9 meters. Um, there's a good reason they give us this to us because we will need it for the next question. So now they ask us to calculate um, the capacity of the pond. So the capacity of the pond is basically a half circle minus the, the little centerpiece in the middle. So I will have to do the pond, that's the water. Okay, and remember that this has a diameter of 3,9. Diameter equals 3,9. And then I have to subtract that little centerpiece in the middle, and they tell us that that has a diameter of 2 meters. So it's going to be a little bit of a lengthy process here. So let's start with the pond. Remember it's a half circle, so I'm going to say half times pi times. If the diameter is 3,9, it means that the radius is just half of that. So half of 3,9 is going to be 1,95 squared. Um, for the centerpiece, I'm going to do the same. It's also half circle times pi. And if the diameter is 2, it means the radius is 1 squared. If I calculate the area of the pond, that will give me 5,97. And if I calculate the area of the centerpiece, that gives me, let's work that out quickly, 1,57. So if I subtract the two, I get that half a donut shape. So subtract them quickly and that gives me 4,4 meters squared. But in this case they asked us um, for the capacity of the pond so that's the volume. So I can't stop there. So to transform this into 3D I have to multiply it by 0, 0,5 because that's how deep they say it is. And that will give me the volume or the capacity of the pond. So half of 4,4 is 2,2. .2, and because it's volume, it is meters cubed. Okay. So that's everything to do with the pond and the half circle. Now we are going to go to the flower beds. And the flower beds are basically um, just rectangles. So let's break them up. Over here, on the left,
left and on the right, we have two rectangles that are the same size. So maybe we can start by working that out. So the length here will be 1, 2 times, and if I express 55 centimeters in meters, it's going to be 0, 0,55. And remember there are two of them of exactly the same size. So we're going to say 1, 2 times 0, 0,55, and there's two of them, which gives me 1, 3, 2. Now we still need to do the inside. So this little blocky on the inside, which is 3 meters. And there we're going to just work with a 0, 0,6. There's only one of them. And that gives me 1, 8. And if I add these together, it will give me um, the total for the flower bed, which is 3,12 meters squared. I'm working with area. Okay, so over here we have the planters. We're going to need this for the next question. They ask us what the area of the graph is. So if I work out the whole rectangle on the outside, which is the 6,8 times the 4,1, I can subtract the flower bed, um, but I also have to subtract that whole big circle. Now don't be tempted to use your answer for the pond because it is this whole section over here, the whole big one. Um, and it's very easy to find the radius of that big circle because it's just going to be half of 4,1. So the radius of this big circle is half of 4,1, which is 2,05. So we'll have to work this out first. So I want this whole section. I'm forgetting that there's water or anything inside. I just want the area allocated for the pond, which will be half times, don't forget that half, times pi times 2,05. So type that in in your calculator, and that gives you 6,6. Okay, there's a lot of writing on this page, so let's see if we can make this very simple. The big rectangle is 6,8 times 4,1. If I work that out, I get... 27,88. Now I'm going to subtract this half circle on the side. And I've worked that out to be 6,6. .6. I've already worked out the planter, which is on the other side. And that is 3,12. So what is left over must therefore be the graph. So let's subtract all of them, 3,12, and that gives me 18,16 meters squared. I hope you followed that process. Okay, let's have a look at the fountain and see if we can find the area. Um, so try and break it up into smaller little bits. In the middle here, we have a square. I know it's a square because the diameter of each of the circles is 1,8. And you can actually write that in for yourself if you want to make it a little bit easier. So this is also 1,8, 1,8. Um, but there seems to be a little problem with this hexagon in the middle. But if I look at the measurements that have been given to us, They've broken it up into a rectangle here in the middle, and then two triangles on either side. This edge over here indicates that we need to work out the height. Um, because it is a regular hexagon, it means that each of these will be 50. That's also going to come in handy. And remember, I can only do Pythagoras in a 90 degree triangle. So this will be 30 and 30. Okay, it's always a good idea just to um, break down the picture before you even look at the questions that they're asking. Just have a look um, and see what they give you. 
So if we want to calculate the area of this fountain without the hexagon in the middle, we will first need to find what the hexagon is. And I'm going to break this up into a triangle and a rectangle. But before we even get there, I will have to do Pythagoras. Okay, so starting with Pythagoras, remember that I said we have to work in a 90 degree triangle. I've told you that this is 50, and we know that this is 30. So very much like the previous question, I'm looking for a short side. Hopefully by now you know that I need to minus when I do this. So we're going to say 50 squared minus 30 squared. And guess what? We get the same answer of 1,600. And if I square that, I get 40 meters. Okay, so I know that that is 40. Now, go back to the picture. And we are going to divide this into the rectangle and triangle. So in the middle, we have a rectangle with measurements of 50 times 60. So 50 times 60. And 5 times 6 is 30. Add two zeros. On the sides, we have two triangles, so half times a base of 60 times a height of 40 that we just worked out, and that is 1,200, which means the other one will be exactly the same. Adding all of this together, we get 5,400 centimeters squared, and that is the area of your hexagon. Okay, so now let's do the rest. We have a square, and the square is 1,8 multiplied by 1,8. That's pretty straightforward. And for that, we get 3,24 meters squared. Then we have the circles. Now, either you can do four half circles, or you know that four half circles is actually two full circles. So I'm going to do it that way because it saves me just a teeny tiny bit of time. So um, circle times two. So circle is pi times radius. Ooh, we haven't worked out the radius. So if the diameter is 1,8, it means the radius is 0, 0,9. 0, 0,9 squared. Okay, let's work that out first. Uh, pi times 0 0.9 squared. And remember to multiply it by 2. Multiply 2. And that gives me 5,09. So now I can go back and add this together. I can add the 3,24 and the 5,09 together, and that gives me 8,33. So that is the whole floor area, but that includes the hexagon. So we still need to subtract the hexagon. But I have a teeny tiny issue because this is meter squared and the hexagon is centimeter squared. If you want to go from centimeters to meters, I have to divide by 100. But because it's a centimeter squared to meter squared, I have to divide by 100 squared. So if you want to do the bunny jumps, that's 100 twice, meaning that this is 0, 0,54 meters squared. So if I want the floor area without the pentagon or the hexagon, I have to say 8,33 minus 0, 0,54. And that gives me a floor area, in case you are missing what we are actually calculating, of 7,79 meters squared. So this was quite an advanced question. Make sure you go through all the different steps. We first did Pythagoras, then we worked out the hexagon, then we worked out the square, the two circles, and then we minus the, the hexagon from the square and the two circles.